All right, in this here video, I want to show you how to do a repeated eigenvalue problem. Now, there are a couple of possibilities uh, for what happens when you get repeated eigenvalues, and I'll explain those two possibilities at the end of the video. For now, I want to see if we can solve this problem right here. We're going to start by taking the determinant of a minus lambda i and setting that equal to zero. There's the determinant of a minus lambda i. I'm just going to start here up in the upper left-hand corner and work out the determinant. That's what I got for the first step. Um, we've done plenty of determinants, so hopefully you can figure out where uh, I got this stuff right here. Now I'm going to simplify. I'm distributing out what is inside of all these parentheses, and now I'm going to cancel what I can. And now it looks like we're going to have to FOIL a few things out, and we're going to set this thing equal to zero. Okay, so we set the determinant equal to zero. Now I'm just going to factor out a lambda squared. Actually, I'll factor out a negative lambda squared. And we get our three eigenvalues, but two of them are the same. So we have a repeated eigenvalue right here of zero. Let's take a look to see what happens when we look for our eigenvector associated with that repeated eigenvalue. So you'll recall we go back to this a minus lambda i times x equals the zero vector equation. In this case, a minus lambda i is just a matrix, three by three matrix, full of twos. So every one of these three equations is exactly the same, 2a plus 2b plus 2c equals 0. In fact, we can cancel out a 2 and just get a plus b plus c equals 0. In class, we used the saying degree of freedom. And that was the case where we had two unknowns and just one equation. In this case, we actually have three unknowns and just one equation. So in this case, it turns out that we actually have two degrees of freedom. So there's actually a technical way to do this. Um, what we can do is we can solve this equation for c. And then we can say we're free to choose A to be whatever we want, and we can choose B to be whatever we want, but C is going to be dependent on those two choices. So our eigenvector, which is just ABC, is going to be A and B, and C is going to be negative A minus B. So we chose A to be a free variable, we chose B to be a free variable, and C depends on what A and B are. Now the reason I wrote it out like this is because we actually want to get two eigenvectors out of this situation. If we have two degrees of freedom here, we actually want to get two eigenvectors out of it. The way to make that happen is to split this up into its A parts and its B parts. That's maybe a confusing way to say it. I'll show you what I mean. We split up this 3 by 1 vector into two 3 by 1 vectors. And you'll notice that if we add these two vectors together, we get right back to where we started. Now that we're at this point right here, we can choose our a value to be 1, since that's a nice convenient value for a. And we get an eigenvector, we'll call it uh, x1, of 1, 0, negative 1. We can then also choose b to be 1, and we get a second eigenvector out of this, 0, 1, negative 1. So in this case, we had two eigenvalues, they were repeated, and we end up getting two eigenvectors out of the situation because we had two degrees of freedom. Now, in other cases where we have repeated eigenvalues, we might not actually get that to happen. We might not be able to get two eigenvectors out of this. So we're going to have to go through a different process when that happens, and that's what we're going to talk about in class. But to finish off this video, I want to find uh, the eigenvector associated with eigenvalue lambda 3 equals 6, which is actually a new process as well. So I plugged in a minus lambda i times our eigenvector equals the zero vector. And if we write out the equations that this system gives us, it actually appears at first glance that we have three completely different equations. Now we know that that shouldn't actually be true because we said right off the bat that the determinant of this matrix has to be zero. And if the determinant of a matrix is zero, then in some way these three equations have to be dependent on one another. In other words, we should get a degree of freedom out of this. The question is, how do we find it? I'll show you a process that's going to work every single time. It's not always going to be the easiest way to do it, but if we run into this situation, this will work. And basically, what I'm going to show you are the first two steps of what's called Gaussian elimination. The first step, I'm going to look at the 2-1, uh, I guess, element of that matrix, and I'm going to eliminate that term using equation 1. And what I would typically do is just copy equation 1 down, and we're going to copy equation 2 down as well, but we're going to multiply it through by 2. And the reason we multiplied equation 2 through by 2 is because now if we add equation 1 and this new one together, the a term in equation 2 is going to be eliminated. And if we do that, we get negative 6b plus 6c equals 0. And that's great. I'll just call that uh, equation 4. 
Now the next step in Gaussian elimination, which is actually usually done just within this matrix, but we'll use the full equations to do it. Um, the next step in Gaussian elimination is to look at element 3, 1 in this matrix, eliminate that element using equation 1. And of course this actually involves the same exact process that we just did. I'm going to copy down equation 1 and multiply equation 3 by 2. Now if we add those two equations together, we get another relationship between B and C. I'll call that equation 5. And when we look at equation 4 and equation 5, those two should be exactly the same. Now if we were to look at what we have now, uh, we actually replace equation 2 with 4 and we replace equation 3 with 5 and this is our new system. What happened here now is something that we should be fairly comfortable with. We have two equations that are exactly the same thing. They both tell us in this case that B equals C. Now if we take that B equals C and plug it in up, up here in equation 1, we get that A equals C as well. So because we had two equations, it turned out to be the exact same thing. We have this degree of freedom, and I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to choose C to be 1. That means B is going to be 1, and it also means A is going to be 1. So the eigenvector associated with uh, lambda equals 6 is going to be 1, 1, 1 in this case. And the general solution, and of course e to the 0t is just going to be 1, so we don't actually need to write those in there. So that is the general solution for our 3 by 3 system that happened to have a repeated eigenvalue. So we got a repeated eigenvalue in this problem and in this case we ended up getting as many degrees of freedom as we had I guess number of repeats in our eigenvalues. So we got as many eigenvectors as we did eigenvalues which is great. But in some cases we won't get the same number of eigenvectors as we had eigenvalues and in that case we need to do something a little bit different because we want the same number of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Okay, so I want to get you a video quiz and this is it right here. I want you to solve this system of differential equations and I've actually given you some information that's going to save you a whole lot of work. I'll just go ahead and tell you that a minus lambda i, the determinant, is going to be this polynomial right here, meaning you already know your three eigenvalues. Uh, you're going to get 5 as an eigenvalue and you're going to have a repeated eigenvalue of negative 1. So hopefully that'll save you some time. All you have to do now is find the eigenvectors and uh, give me a general solution. Okay, good luck.